Welcome, everyone, to the Comedy Sports Podcast, starring your host, Christine Rolo Capriolo. And we've got a special guest today, Rock and Rolly Cafaro. Rolly Cafaro, our guest today on the Comedy Sports Podcast. Rolly, I remember meeting you in Madison. I, you know what? I remember that too. It was like 95, 96. Yes. The shows were on State Street. Yep, and it was uh, Mark Molitsky's Going Away show. Was it really? Yeah, Mark Elliott. But do you remember? That's why I was there. That was the one of the... Oh, so it wasn't State Street. It was Rocky Rococo's. It was, uh, no, it was um, the uh, on the cross street by La Bamba. Yes, it was State Street, yes. Yeah. And so. you and I were so excited because your name is Roly. Right. And my nickname That's is right. Rolo. That's right. And you were like so excited to hear that. That's and you're like, right. Your name's Rolo? Yeah. And I explained it was my nickname. And I was freaked out that your name was really. Rolly. And you're like, who in God's green earth would actually go <laughs> by that name? What kind of Italian name? family are you? <laughs> Rolly? But you know, it's funny. I, I remember that show because I was really excited that uh, Mark Elliott, it was his going away show. So yeah. Mark was a Madison player who right. then had come to Milwaukee and he was a radio guy mm-hmm. and he was moving out to LA. That's right. To do okay. comedy, but radio. I think he's still doing radio in Los Angeles. He's so. working with Ryan Seacrest. Are you serious? He produces Ryan Seacrest's show. God, yeah, and he amazing. was doing Shadow Stevens before oh that. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's yeah. so wild. Yeah. Um, but so he asked me to come up and join in, in the last show. And I was really honored and it was fun. But it was really different because there were only a couple Milwaukee players that came up. Otherwise, it was all you Madison players. And you guys played differently than it, we played in Milwaukee. It was very different. And I liked it a lot. Not that I don't like Milwaukee. Yeah. But Madison didn't have to live up to the hype of being Milwaukee. Right. And it was more, I don't know, it was different. We it, didn't. It, it really was. There was a rhythm to the show that was mm-hmm. different. I, and I, I, I remember this because that was the first time. Um, that because I'd performed in Madison before, but it always seemed to be with Milwaukee players. And so we have a different rhythm. And in fact, it was Mark Elliott who had said it when he came to Milwaukee. He said, you you guys deliver a punchline yes. every 15 seconds. Yeah. And Madison seemed more long form when was. we did it. It was long form. You didn't go for that right. shtick laugh. Right. And you just... The crowds were different. It was, it was, they were used to the way right. Madison played. It was, and that was, that was one of the first times where I felt that the, the rhythm of, that there's a rhythm to improv. Yeah. Where you all have, you clearly have to be on it. And I was just out of phase. I was, my phase was, I was looking for like, boom, 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 we need to move. Yeah. And everyone else, Joe Thompson, who I love Joe Thompson. Oh, yeah. And it was just, but it was like there was much more of an arc. To the yeah. scene, and it wasn't necessarily going for that instant laugh. It was kind of well, and we played more. We were we had the ability to play with the actual format of the show more there, right? Right. As opposed to Milwaukee has their script. I don't want to say script because it's right. improv, but you know what I right. mean. They play this game first, that game second. They plan which right. games they're going to play. And Madison, we never planned what games we were going to play. Right. It was always like a challenge. We'd try to figure it out. It was like a puzzle. Yeah. I don't know. Once I remember playing, the challenge was, the round was play a game not on the stage. This was at Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex And don't do a scene. Yes, yeah, no, and Alex <laughs> Shapiro was there. Oh yeah. Remember Shaq? Yeah, yeah. And what oh, God, what it was Alex, I think, was captain and Brian Judkins was oh, captain, Brian, I wanna say, on yeah, the other yeah. team. And one team played the scene in the audience. This was at Rockies where we had that like stadium style seating. Right. And so we had to jump around on the tables and chairs in the audience and do our scene. No one was allowed on the stage. Did it work? <laughs> Totally. It was hilarious. Well, maybe just for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other team, we had, this was Rocky Rococo's on the west side, but we had a door in the theater that went to the parking lot. 
And so the other team did the scene in the parking lot. We dragged the audience outside <laughs> and we had to do the whole scene in the parking lot. The crowds were just, I don't know, they went with it. There was another time on State Street we did something like that. You had to leave the show within the four minutes of the scene and run out to a restaurant and get food and bring it back. Okay, that's awesome. And I remember that's... running to a coffee shop and bringing back cookies and Matt Finale ran out and got like a taco. That is absolutely, I remember, so I, I absolutely, I, I, so I do, I love breaking the fourth wall. Yes. I, that's really and I do like going into the audience like games like town meeting yes. I like interacting with the audience I like running out into the I I, I don't know why but I I think audiences like well, it well they I, like it that's yeah. part of what we do right yeah and and so I, I like doing it but finding a creative way to do it so I go back I remember seeing this was uh, early 90s it was, it was seeing a blues band it was Leroy Airmaster so mm-hmm. a local um, and he played harmonica and I was seeing him at the old Tamarack Bar which is it's now down by the what used to be the Bradley Center, okay. and now it's something else now. But it's still there. It's it's a really cool old bar, and he's playing harmonica, and he's jamming on the harmonica, and it's hot. It's right. really hot, and he walked out the front door, and but he's still got the <laughs> mic, and he's now outside, and he's playing. He's the band outside. is jamming, and and all of a sudden he he flags a cab. <laughs> and did you pick him up in your cab? No, in my cab, I go. I came up. It was my cab. Times are hard, you know. <laughs> so I had to put down my Michelob, and then I you know. So I so I come in and. And he gets in the cab, and he's got a wireless mic, and he's playing, and the cab takes off. And he's still, and, and he's still playing, and then the harmonica fades away, and the band keeps playing, and even the band was kind of like looking <laughs> at hell? one another. <laughs> and then coming up, back up the alley, the cab pulls up, stop, and now you can hear the, the, the harmonica yeah. start coming back in. The back door opens, and Leroy, he gets out. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No way. And he came back in the bar, and the place went, went nuts, nuts I bet. which I absolutely loved. And then, so another, this is a comedy sports thing. It wasn't me, but I've seen it. So it was Dave Tooney when he was out in L.A. when mm-hmm. he won the uh, best improv guy in L.A. But the thing that put him over the top was, which I love this, it was best scene with a person off the street. Nice. So they just, they're like, that's it. Someone goes on the street, grabs, I mean, goes, leaves the theater, just grabs someone off the street. Yes. Like, you want to be in a, in a show? And they bring him <laughs> in. They have absolutely no idea. And and Dave did this scene that is absolutely hysterical with a person off the street. I think that that would be, well, it could be really funny. Right. Could could not be. No, it could not be. <laughs> could bomb. Yes. No, that's true. But I think that's important. That's what I, I miss that about Madison. The real, it seemed just experimental right. more in the sense. Right. And that, you know, it was funny. I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, it's okay. But that was, <laughs> so that was sort of... I, I, it wasn't the gripe, but it was kind of like I remember talking with other players here, which mm-hmm. is sometimes in Madison they're doing it for themselves, yeah, for sure, and not doing it for the for the show. Yeah, and that's something that Milwaukee's really good at yeah. is remembering the audience. Yeah. yeah, I remember coming in though because I played high school in Milwaukee and then came out or did high school in Milwaukee, went to college in Madison. That's when I played the team in Madison and came back here. You're actually the reason I started playing here. Really? Well, you might, you don't remember. No. I came back here and was hanging out with a bunch of my high school friends who are still at comedy sports, Bill Bartell, yeah. Todd Bishop, you know, Tim Higgins was down there, I think. Maybe it wasn't there yet. I don't remember. Anyway, and th- I started doing workshops because Bill's like, oh, you should, you know, come back. And I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, and so I started going to workshops and I just kept going and kept going. And I remember talking to you once about it. And I, and you said, why aren't you playing? I said, I don't know. Dick hasn't told me to start calling in yet. And everybody laughed and you said, just start calling in. Yeah. And I did. And the next weekend, I, that was it. I was playing both Friday and both Saturday for the next like 10 years because you told me just, just call in. Don't wait for Dick. And you know what? Because <laughs> someone told me that when yeah. I started. And, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to just like, just call just in, call. which is, that was always my little bone of contention. I think I've used yeah. bone of contention now twice in this. Um, you. Yeah, I, I That's think exciting. I I'm going to yeah. tell oh, you. Oh yeah, you're right that. Yeah. So, okay. so, um, <laughs> two, two. So, um, so when you started, yeah. no one ever told you, no one told you, to no, call. One, no one told you that you were suddenly part of it. No, no. And then when you kind of did become a part of it, no one welcomed you nope. or anything no one was nope. just oh it was just like oh new person yeah um and make me laugh new person right <laughs> and that was I, I i still i remember my very first show so tell was, me wait, wait, wait yeah tell me about this i want to go back even before right, yeah. that uh where are you from i'm from milwaukee you're from milwaukee uh, yes i'm from milwaukee okay uh i grew up here i saw comedy sports for the first time in 1984, so right after it had started. Right after it started, Donna Cults. Donna Cults. Okay. I was, um, it was the summer after I graduated from high school. Where'd you go? 
I went to Marquette High School. Okay. And um, I had just graduated from high school, and a group of us went, and I was like, "What? What is this?" And I was <laughs> so at the t- at the time too. I was I was a kid drawn to comedy. I didn't know how drawn to comedy I was, but I um, I used to as a small child would stay up and watch the Dean Martin roast. Okay. I lived for the Dean Martin, the Carol Burnett show. Yes, Carol Burnett. I live. I mean, just God, give me the Carol Burnett show. Yes, I, you know. And then were you the class clown? I were wasn't. You being... Wasn't no. I kind of so I was, but I also had this goody two shoes okay. kind of persona. Yeah. Um, like I used to hate, they used to call guys from my high school, Eddie Haskell, you know, like, sure. but I was, that was me. I was just like, hello, Mrs. Cleaver, you know, and then, blah, 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 you know, and but you and, were funny. You were entertaining. I think I was. And I yeah. think I was all along. Yeah. Um, and cause I remember telling jokes as kids, my parents were like bring, bring the little Rolly in here. Sure. And I would tell some joke that had some entendre in it that I didn't know I'm telling. And they're all like, ah, <laughs> but, um, so, and, and then, um, like stand up comedians. We had the, the Smothers Brothers. I live, mm-hmm. and to this day, I still think I have largely just ripped off Tommy Smothers. You Tommy look like Smothers, a Smothers Brothers. Really? Yeah, now that you say it. Oh, I'd, I'd take that. That's all right. <laughs> Tommy or Dickie. <laughs> but um, so, uh, a Smother. A Smother. I, I, um, but I, and my parents had like Flip Wilson albums and the Smother, and I used to listen to the Smothers Brothers. And I, the idea of making people laugh, I loved. And then when I was in high school, I was completely into Second City. Like okay. I, I watched Saturday Night Live. I right. remember staying up late watching the f- very first SNL, 1975. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, this is kind of cool. But So I, I was a comedy geek without knowing I was a comedy geek. And then um, I, and I would always, I could like recount episodes of SCTV and characters to my mm-hmm. friends and they'd all be laughing and I'm like, ah. and then I saw comedy sports okay. and I'm like, I, I want to do that. That's that awesome. Was that was, yeah. Except it didn't happen that way. I went away to college. Where'd you go? I went to Creighton university in <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very exciting. No, it was, but it was good. I met my wife there. Okay. Um, and then, um, uh, and you're I, a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Is that and where you I went to back. law school? No, I went to law school at university of Wisconsin okay. in Madison. Okay. And then I, I really honestly did not see comedy sports again until oh, it was after we got married. So it was it was 1991 is when we got married. So it was, it was the winter of 1992. So almost eight years had gone by. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And we went to cults again. And and I'm like, this is this is great. And there was a placard that said, uh, if if you like this, sign up for workshops. And I also remember going in, like getting tickets early that day yeah. and going upstairs and I bought the tickets from Dick. And so that was the first time I met Dick. Okay. And and I'm like, oh, I've seen him in the newspaper. You know, sure. it's so weird. Like, oh, there, there, there's Dick. And I bought the tickets and he's like, yeah, see you tonight. Um, And the show was great. Yeah. Angelo. I remember Angelo and Joe were in it. And, yeah. Who, um, do you remember anybody else? Was no, Dick in it? Were, Dick was not in it. No. But Ang- I, I vividly remember Angelo and Joe. And, and Angelo, they played a game should have said. Okay. And um, and it's it's kind of like what, um, but it um, so it, a line would be delivered and mm-hmm. then the the ref or a designated person in the audience it was a designated person in the audience because okay. it was me it was you oh, yeah, it was me had to yell should have said oh okay and then and then the the actor you or the, what the, you're saying would then have to come up with an alternate line okay and it was fun and I, and I remember doing that and I and that was fun and I said to my wife oh workshops I'd like to do that okay. And that was it. Yeah. I no, and, and and but I never followed through. Oh, you didn't? No. <laughs> so then it's the summer of ninety two. Okay. And um, my wife goes, "Oh, I just want to let you know, I got you an early birthday gift." <gasps> and uh, hey, hey, whoa! That was a burp. <laughs> I was hoping to get some Rolly Cafaro gas on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Too much Michelob this Too afternoon. Too much Michelob this on your afternoon. way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, Sorry, man. people at home. So, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna laugh about that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so we. Uh, um, she got you an early present. She got me an early present, which was comedy sports, comedy sports workshops. workshops. And I remember, so we were living in an apartment downtown. We had one car. She worked nights. Yeah, I worked, and so I had to walk from our apartment down to Comedy Sports. Now in the third way, it just opened in, on Jefferson, on Jefferson Street. Jefferson Street, one twenty six. And I remember walking in, and I was twenty six years old at the time, and I remember thinking, what? 
am I? I'm too old for this. What am I doing? This this ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> at twenty six. At twenty six, I know. And um, you know, like this is, and that first it was that that first um, workshop, and then I ended up meeting Bill, Bill, uh, Bartell. Bill Bartell, Tim Higgins. We were all around that same class. Um, Mark Redlick. Okay. Um, and then I was right ahead of me were Rob Schraub, Dan Harmon, um, uh, all the guys. So then I, I, and then I hit it off with them with Sean McKenna, uh, Sean McKenna, and um, Peter uh, Alberts. Peter Alberts. Although Peter, or was he already there? Uh, Peter was kind of in and out. And Peter and I, um, God, what, how did we? I think Peter and I kind of we met doing shows, but I don't know if I was there before him, okay, or he was there before me. But we were right around the same time. And, and who then, was your teacher? So uh, uh, J- was John Plesnik was 101 yeah. and Bo was uh, 102. Okay. And they were phenomenal. Yeah. And so I started in July of 92. And by January of 93, I was doing shows regularly. Because someone told you to call in. Because someone told me to call in. No, no one. Yeah, someone, yeah, yeah. In fact, it was John's wife, John Plesnik's wife at the time, um, Karen, mm-hmm. who just said, you should be calling in. You should be calling in. So that's funny. So now I bring it. So now I tell people that. You told me, and that's yeah. when I started doing it. I tell people that, and I go out of my way with new people to say, yeah. welcome. Yeah. You're part of this. It is. Yeah. Because I never, and it wasn't that I was angry about it, but no one really says. So going back to my first show. Yes, I was going to say, oh, yeah. let's get oh, to that. Yeah. That's we're like, gonna, I sidetracked sti- you. Stitch it all up. But yeah, so I went back to it was a, um, me, Angelo, Nancy, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I don't know if Brian, I don't think Brian Green was on my team, but Brian Green was in that show. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Brian Green's been in every show. I was going to yeah, say, he yeah, was yeah, in my yeah, first know, show yeah, in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just, everyone's got Brian Green. <laughs> I think Brian was there. It was like, uh, even Jesus, like, I think Brian was... <laughs> The Last Supper. At the Last Jesus, Supper, yes. would it be great? The picture of the Leonardo da Vinci picture. And and they'll say, like, Wait, is that Brian Green? That's Brian Did he Green. Just take Jesus' as French fries? <laughs> <laughs> he did. It was, uh, he took his fries. Uh, that's right. That, there it was going to be the breaking of the fries, and there was going to be plenty for everybody. <laughs> no. But uh, unfortunately, Brian no. Green was invited. Right, yeah. The, the, <laughs> that's funny. So, um, and it was like the, the first, it was in the first half. And um, what was the game? It was dubbing. Okay. And so we had four players on teams back right, then. Right, it was four back then. And Angelo was the captain. And he's like, Captain, what do you want to play? He goes, well, we're going to play dubbing. He goes, what style? One player dubs for everyone. And Welcome like, to comedy sports, and Rolly. Angelo handed me the microphone. <laughs> I know he he did. handed me the microphone, <laughs> and he goes, trial by fire. Yep. And it was, the whole scene was on me. <laughs> this is scene number one. And I was like, I got to do every voice, yeah. make every joke, right. justify every position. And I guess it was all right because he, they <laughs> talked to me afterwards. But I will also say at the end of the show or in the second half, we played the game Musical Chairs. I still, I can play every game in comedy sports. Yeah. Um, musical Chairs is the only one that kind of makes my butt pucker. <laughs> Because it goes back to, it goes back to, it goes back to this first. So, so I had never played it. I had right. never seen it played. Okay. I didn't know what. And so it's like, we, we're going to play musical chairs. Right. And it, it gets explained to me. It's just like musical chairs. And, but then if you're left standing. You have to sing. You've got to sing. Yeah. And so, but no one. So I thought the goal was to win. So you wouldn't have to sing. <laughs> so I'm like. And, You're and, like, I gotta uh, get a seat. Oh my god! And Kurt, um, uh, Scholler, Scholler, Kurt Scholler also. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, and so Kurt was in that, and <laughs> I, it came down to Kurt, and I'm battling like hell <laughs> to win because, right. and it was, and it was very funny because it was legit. We were battling for that chair, <laughs> but Kurt, Kurt thought I was just being funny. I was battling for my, li- my life, my life because I didn't want to sing. <laughs> Because I'm like, I do not know, and I won. And I'm I honestly God, I was so relieved. And and I'm like, ah, and I'm starting to walk off. And then uh-uh. they're like, all right, so now let's get a musical style for Rolly. I'm like, <laughs> all right. And then what? I can't even what? do a pucker sound. But, uh, but it was just like, like, oh God. Oh, what? And then and then and, and like in unison, the entire crowd's like, rap. I'm oh like, God! Oh, How'd that go? Uh, uh, <laughs> We're closer uh, in the scene. I'm actually rapping better now than I did 
It was the 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 the, the what had been a great scene to that point ended with a. <laughs> oh, they felt bad for you. Oh, I felt bad for me. <laughs> It was, did your team back you? Did they help you? They did. They 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 completely did. They okay. realized that I was so floundering, and so, and then they came out and they did it. And right. I think I. But so then I did not play musical chairs again until a summer fest, and it was a it was a when, back when we did it. In back like, when we in, did it for like, like thousands, right, of, thousands people. of people. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was a, and Kurt Scholler was right next to me. We're doing it, and as this is happening, I'm like. Okay, this is I haven't played this since my first show. Right. And I and I and we're doing it and we're going through and I don't remember anything specifically about doing it at Summerfest other than the fact that it killed. Yeah. And so then I'm like, I am done with that game. Never. I have now seen the the worst part personally and the best. And the best. <laughs> I don't ever want to do it again. Right. And so it periodically comes up. It was like, hey, we should do musical chairs. So I'm like, no, no. no. I don't think so. And I am, you know, comedy or improv is all about yes and. Sure. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> so I am yeah, with yeah, some games. Yeah, too. I'm like, no, no, that. And I think radio is the only other one, too, that I, I where. God, we haven't played that yeah, in well, forever. Yeah. And Maybe. I think you have to know how to play it. Well, yeah. And you have to know the people you're playing with. I feel like back to when Madison, when I was in Madison, that was a tight knit group. And then coming to Milwaukee, there were some people that were tight knit. Like, right. you know, I came in my first show, I remember was Brian Green and Joe Cortez, and I right. was terrified. But they were really nice. Like, hey, welcome, have fun. And, yeah. you know. But you get to know the players who you play with regularly, and that helps. You know, right. people's strengths and weaknesses. And right. and if you don't know the people you're playing with, games like that can go very, very, very badly. I completely agree. And yeah. and I we didn't play it enough in Milwaukee to sort of at least develop a vibe with it. Or, you know what? It was funny when now that I think about it, we didn't we didn't develop hooks. Like yeah. if, if a scene had a hook that you could you could hang a joke on, yeah, and we would play that a lot, yeah. And it was difficult to find a hook for radio, yeah, for radio, yeah. And it shouldn't be because you can find a hook in anything, but it, that was the one. But you know, similar to radio, which is a game we haven't played, and I just thought about it now. Do you remember playing the game Audition? So it was kind of like a chorus line. All the players all would the stand players, up. All yeah. the players would be on stage, mm-hmm. and the referee had a microphone, but he was Off he or she side, was the like voice. Chorus line. Yeah, like a chorus line. Yeah, and like uh, number three, tell me about yourself. Yeah, and it was just you just had to adopt a character, right? Completely open. Yeah, and it was it was really fun. Kind of like was, town meeting. Like town meeting. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And uh, oh, that, maybe you should bring that one back. That was, yeah, that That's was definitely one. fun. That was fun. But then, uh, but that uh, takes a major confidence to be able to do that game, in town meeting, right. and to feel confident about just throwing a character right. in. And what do you think about, like you talked about a hook or the shtick? What do you think about, you know, there's some players that would always do the same character in town meeting mm-hmm. or always the same joke in a certain game. Sometimes it works, it kills, the crowd loves it, right. you know, because it works. You know, it's funny. Right. That's me. I mean, well, I don't want to say that's me all the time. I, Found hooks. Mm-hmm. I I kind of know what bits or things that I do that are funny, mm-hmm. and I used to go to them mm-hmm. um, because I, I knew that they worked. Right. I don't know what, at what point it was. Not that I w- won't go back and use something that I know that works. Yeah. But I really now because I play less often, I get more of a charge out of just trying to. Do something new, yeah. different, because I, I it's it's more invigorating. Sure, if it works. Right, if it works. Well, the other <laughs> thing is, I'm getting older. I can't remember any of this stuff anyway, so it's all new to me. But it is, and so that was the thing. I am. I also had this. So it was within the first couple years of doing comedy sports, and I was lucky enough to be first a substitute member of the Dead Ale Wives, and then right. I became a regular member of the Dead mm-hmm. Ale Wives. And, and who was in that group when you started? So was that uh, Kurt Scholler, Dan Harmon, Rob Schraub, Peter Alberts, Sean McKenna? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Bo, and oh, Mundy. Johnson, Bo and, Mundy and Mundy Carter. Yeah, Bo and Mundy. And so at first I was just a substitute, mm-hmm. um, and then they said, "Would you do it full time?" Yeah. Which was full time Sunday nights. I mean, but I'm like, yeah, 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 and I. Absolutely loved it because of the long form. That was a great group. That I was, went to see them when I was in high school. I thought it was Wednesday. When I was going, it was Wednesday nights. 92, do, yeah. 93. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. Wednesday nights we'd go. And I remember when all a bunch of those guys moved out to LA. It was right. a huge bummer that they were all leaving. I was really bummed about that too. But then you realize then there was a whole other group of people. So right. when the, the alewives continued then without 
Dan, because I thought at first, how do the alewives continue without right. Dan and Rob? Right. And because they were just like, and Kurt. And Kurt. And Kurt. I, I, yeah. So the, those, to me, those were the three that were just like, oh my God, how do you replace them? Right. All of a sudden, Mundy, in my mind, became just Mundy, an unbelievable yes. He's improviser. Hilarious. Just so good. Bo was always solid. Sean was always mm-hmm. solid. But then Dylan comes along. Mm-hmm. And Dylan, I'm just like, but then guys like Tom Clark and Lee, um, Lee Becker. And I'm like, okay, it's all. Yeah. It, it kind of, it's different. But it's new but and it's it, still good. Right. And yeah. it was still funny. And you, yeah. you just, you found things again. And I stopped doing it because. When kids came and, yeah. and well, you I, had four kids, yeah, I think so. And what, four, yeah, yes, yeah, something, like something like that. Yeah, four, <laughs> four ish. No, four. And um, uh, but I do. I I I love that. And then there was a time, myself, Dick, um, uh, Ra, uh Dan Harmon, mm-hmm. and Sean, um, and Tom New mm-hmm. created in the early '90s. It was right after the OJ trial, and Dick was like. <laughs> The, oh, the, the trial stuff, comedy the trial court, stuff. comedy court, comedy yes. court, and honest to God, yeah. that might have been the best improv I've ever been involved with. Yeah, it was so funny, and it was so funny because Rob, um, not Rob, uh, Dan, I can't believe we just met. Dan was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, Sean was brilliant yeah it tended to be a uh, dick was the judge he was just like unwitting i mean you know just like, hi, hi, hi. Right. that was hysterical and, and tom knew uh, tom knew would always kind of try to play a lawyer right. like he would because, and i was a lawyer yeah. and so the last thing i wanted to be was a, a lawyer. lawyer so i always like <laughs> played like the dunce um but that was how long did that go on because i remember dick tried to bring that back in, I want to say Kauth was instrumental in that too, Mike Kauth, mm. bringing it back right. in the new place where we are now, yeah. which... Can I, I, I have a good yeah. <laughs> a story about bringing it back. So when we did it, it was, it was great. So we did it for about a year and a half. But then it um, stopped. It stopped because we actually wanted someone to come with a, a real dispute, not like a, a litigious dispute, but we wanted something actual like if you were an if, audience member. an audience member who had a uh, some gripe with their wife about she's always late perfect right that, that is a dispute that yeah. we can work on but people people wanted to come and watch the show they didn't want to be part of the show oh, okay okay and um and so and without someone to actually have an that issue story, to bring up, uh, issue, yeah, yeah we needed the story and so it just it kind of fizzled out so then i was i wanted to bring it back too and we did bring it back a couple times and it was it was fun, yeah. but we didn't have enough players like um, comfortable yet in the format, mm-hmm. and so it, it didn't quite find its rhythm. Yeah, it I didn't will catch say. On. So I still remember this. It's a friend. Uh, it was for his fiftieth birthday, so it was like five or six years ago, mm-hmm. and. His wife wanted to throw a surprise party, mm-hmm. and she had been a fan of comedy sports all the way back in the cults. And she goes, "I want to, I want to throw a party for like 100 people or 150 people, surprise him at comedy sports, and just do a show for him." I'm like, "That's awesome." I said, "You know what? Let's go one better. Let's surprise him and put put him on trial. You did and we're going to do a comedy court yeah. in front of you know yeah. it's 150 friends." <laughs> and I'm like, "This this will be really fun." So so she buys out. Comedy sports for the first show, and um, uh, people come in. Open bar it was like a wedding. Yeah, uh, people just got annihilated, <laughs> oh, no. just annihilated, drunk. <laughs> and so now we come in and we're doing the show, and doing it with people who had never done the show before. Right. And I'm like, it's easy, it's easy. You just do this, yeah, you do, I do this. this. But it, and I can't remember who did the show, but it was. <laughs> It was dying, and it wasn't dying because of us. It was dying because the crowd was hammered, yeah. and so much so, two of the jurors, people that I knew, were so drunk, <laughs> and uh, then Mike Kauth actually got up out of the stage. He was the bailiff, right? And he gets up and he had to escort them out. <laughs> people from they're like in the, the show, party. and I'm like, this is, and this whole thing is just going sideways. Oh, no. And the only, I haven't been part of a lot of shows that bombed, but <laughs> when I've been in a part of a show that's bombed. I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't know these people, yeah. and and uh, I can, you know, I knew every <laughs> single person in in this room, and they're all like, oh, so this is what you do? Oh, yeah, yeah, this oh, is this your. Oh, yeah. this is, oh, <laughs> You're I'm like, like oh, great. it's not, it's not. This is just, but I, I Paulie, 
coined this line and I kind of refined it, but it was like, it was a show that we came, we saw, we left through the kitchen, <laughs> which I love, but I put it into Latin or pig Latin kind of, it's like, Vene Vidi Exodo Cucini. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm out of here. And I'm like, where, where the hell's the kitchen door? Cause I want to, I <laughs> so, so want to disappear. I, and there was an old show in the seventies, soap. There was a yes. character, Bert, uh-huh. and Bert thought he could become invisible by snapping his fingers. <laughs> and that's, I'm just like, yeah. Give me out, give me yeah, out. Yeah, give me out. Just, uh, I'm out. I'm invisible. <laughs> they can't see me. I'm getting in my car and I'm going home. That was, oh my God, that was, yeah. yeah. But you, you were always so happy and funny and easy to play with in the show. Like, it's... I mean, of course, we all have bad shows, yeah. but it's surprising to hear there are moments when you actually were like, I can't take it. I got to go because you never <laughs> seem that way. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and I would say the same about you. Yeah, well, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, well, no, I, I think that I, honestly, I think we're all that way. Yeah. And, you know, whereas it just it like happens. I've never seen you in a bad mood. I've never seen you after a show say like, oh, this was terrible. You know, some people can get down and take yeah, it personally. Maybe I just hide it. You, maybe you're good at that because you just you always just seem to have a blast. Oh, uh, I do. You know, I honestly do have a blast and I still have a blast. And I think it's because I don't do it a thousand times. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, so now I, I maybe on average I do about 40 shows a year. You and, used to be, though, every Friday and Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so back, you know, when. When our kids were younger and we weren't going out doing anything, that yeah. just was my weekend. And yeah. so I would I'd maybe do a hundred twenty-five to one hundred fifty shows a year. Yeah. Um, I mean, still nothing compared to like Polly or Brian well, or sure. you know those guys at the time or like Dave is doing now. Right. Um, your husband, uh-huh. in case people don't. Do mm-hmm. people know you're married? Uh, I think they do now. <laughs> This just in. It's just so, yeah. in. So, Is that still going on? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here. Will he ever be? A, will he ever be a guest on this podcast? Yes, he will. He's even brought it up, and I didn't want to have him like at the beginning. I wanted to bring in, you know, like some of the older players. I don't mean older. I yeah. mean like vets. Then they're longer. Yeah. And um, Dave is very insightful. He's taught comedy sports. You know, he runs the corporate stuff for like corporate workshops. He has a lot of thoughts about it, although unlike you, who is always happy, he can get sort of upset about it sometimes. Well, you know, it's funny. That That is, I think when you do it more, you more as a job, yeah, yeah. yeah, you have more skin in the game. Yeah. And so it, it does. It, it weighs on you more oh, for sure. from the business side yeah. to the performance side. Um, I do have little, like my little gripes, I, when I go nuts, I, I want the music to be loud. Um, I love when music gets interspersed into scenes. Mm-hmm. Sound, those are those little professionalism things that I think take a show to the next level. Absolutely. So when you know when we used to do the national anthem or the introduction, it's like oh. I'm like, oh my god, this is no, that's or not. Or when the it's way too it be. loud, when the right. voice is too loud right. and you can't make out anything. Right. We uh, I and sometimes I used to like, I, and I think taking a show up the professionalism ladder but when uh when we used to have a tv in the middle of the screen yeah. in the middle of the screen in the middle of the stage yeah and a tv in the middle of the screen is very convenient as well <laughs> the uh, um uh and i had this idea of doing like a secret agent scene um and it was kind of a mission impossible so we still do and i kind of i kind of came up with the mission impossible thing I yeah. think, and but at this time it was i remember i was with Polly. i'm like we had we had that big tv in the middle yeah and we actually had a camera that you could project uh, images from the camera onto, onto that the screen. screen. I'm like, Polly, go in the booth, <laughs> and you you're gonna be like my boss. I'm gonna be the secret agent, mm-hmm. and and I'm gonna go to my watch phone. All right, so like I'll go upstage <laughs> and I'll look at my watch phone. The lights will come down. Let's have the lights come down, and then the TV come on. So like you are there. You are. You're the face yeah. that I'm looking at on my watch. Yeah. And and it was one of those things. It just worked perfectly nice but at uh, once but once. it was no, no 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 but it just worked perfectly so you hear Polly just you know like going control control <laughs> control coming over i'm like yes yes so i go up stage and i like i pull up my watch like i'm looking at it sure enough they dim the lights and the tv comes on and it is just paul's gargantuan head <laughs> filling the entire screen and he's just staring <laughs> right into it it was it might it was honest to God one of the funniest oh things I'd ever seen. It was kind of like the wizard in the Wizard of Oz, you know. <laughs> the and big head. Like, Whoa. But it was just a, 
it was oh my god and Polly is so damn funny and, oh my and, god, and yes. it was yeah it was a ra- but so I love the the professionalism so if there are things that get me mm-hmm. it's when a show appears non-professional right um uh I do think like it's really important for referees to keep a pace yeah and that drives me up a wall that if a, if a if a pace falls or mm-hmm. they're not oh, I don't want to say controlling the crowd but um managing right. that gets me unnerved really yeah is that weird yeah I no mean, i mean it's good to hear that you get unnerved you just never show it yeah well so that's yeah. a good skill also yeah i don't know if we should be showing it during no the show, not but at all I mean, but i mean even as like just being on your team or right, something you right. never sit on the sideline and gripe about no, anything I, I i and i i now this is sort of the brass tacks of doing comedy sports as opposed to improv but um the referee is such an integral part of the show mm-hmm. even though they're not up there making the jokes right but they are, mm-hmm. but they are driving the show. They are setting the stage for the jokes to be made. Right. So knowing who is up there first and foremost, and knowing what our strengths or what they're like, picking things that are going to work. Yeah. Not necessarily. It's kind of sculpting the show. Yeah. But also keeping the pace of it going. And so I, I've said this: a good referee mm-hmm. can make an average show great. Mm-hmm. Or I should a great referee can make an average show great. A bad referee, or just uh, just off, not controlling right. the crowd, not doing, is going to make a good show bad. Absolutely. And and is they're the face of the night. They are. They're the master of ceremonies. Yeah. They are. They are seeing you through. So that's why I always say the like new refs, like own it. Yeah. Own it. Get up there and own it. Have Be- you ever refed? I refed once. Once. Yeah. No, and I, I wanted to ref. I, yeah. I've said to Dick, I, we like traded favors. I'm like, I'll do this for you if you let me ref. And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I never. And, <laughs> and, and I, never. I never. You so shocked? there was one show. There was one show. It was a 10 o'clock show. Yeah. Uh, it was Saturday. And someone's, whoever was, I think it was Dylan, was supposed to ref and his voice was shot. And okay. he's like, I can't do it. And I'm like, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. He was like, it's you. And so all of a sudden I went out and I'm like, I've never refed. I've never learned the spiel. I never, I didn't do anything. I don't even watch the spiel. Yeah. And, no, and, you're and, and backstage. Right. right. Yeah. And, and then I came out and I'm like, hey. And I'm like, I'm, I'm Rolly. I'm your bunny for the evening, you know? And, and, and it worked. Mm-hmm. And I remember Steve Scholler saying, you've never refed before? I'm like, I've never refed. He's like, right. why don't you ref? I'm like, I don't know. But then I'm kind of like. Yeah. I I like playing too. I like playing so much more. I've wrapped a few times. And I don't know, you feel the weight of the show on your shoulders. Yeah. You know you're the one. And but also it's just for me not as fun. I'd really? rather be, I'd rather be in the show and You know it's funny though. I every ref seems to say that. They're like I I want to do a show, but I like refing. Like, okay, Dave is an awesome ref. He is? Yes. I think I'll have to tell him that. No, I think so too. I think Dave is an awesome ref. Yeah. And I will say this. I remember when Dave first started to where Dave is now. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about comedy sports? <laughs> Wait, are we talking about my husband? Are we talking about the show? <laughs> is there another Dave in the group? No. Uh, no, it's just it's like one of those things like, oh my God, he's he's just so oh, good. Oh, totally. He's grown. And he's he's really good at I don't know how to explain talking. it. Talking. Talking. <laughs> but he's he just he's a rule follower and he knows what works. Mm-hmm. And so he does what works. Right. And when he but sees something that doesn't work, he wants like notes. He wants to point it out. Right. Which we should do. Which we should do. Yeah. I'm a big proponent of yeah. notes. Um, because what other job do you go to where you don't get feedback? Right. You know? That's true. I want to ask you your nickname. Oh, we talked about mine is Rolo because it was my last name all messed up. Yeah, what? How'd you get Rock and Rolly? Uh, you know, it was something. It, it was something else first. It was, God, I don't even remember. It was Rolly the something. <laughs> is it? And then it. Um, someone said because Rock and Robin Yount. Rock um, and Robin because Yount. Robin Yount yeah. and and it was either Angelo or Joe or something said. Rock and Rolly, that just makes sense because it's like rock and roll okay. and rock and robin. And I'm like, oh. And that was it? That was it. Just so there was, yeah, there was nothing. And there was, it was kind of like a roller derby name, I guess. And I didn't put much thought into it. And like, oh, we rock and rolly. Yeah. But yeah. But it's funny, like, when we get new Mr. Voices, mm-hmm. um, they, and they don't know that my name is Rolly, right. it's Raleigh. 
and I get oh. that a lot. And they're like, rock and rolly. And I'm like, no, you don't, you imbecile. It's <laughs> rock and roll. Rock and <laughs> rolly. Like, 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 what? How do you, like, do you not even, you know, uh, but and so I, I don't call him an imbecile, but uh, is Roly short for Roland? Roland is my real name. Yes. 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 Are I'm, you like the third? I'm not. No, I'm I'm Roland Charles Cafaro. That's my name. Actually, it's Roland Charles Keel Cafaro. I took my wife's maiden name as a middle name. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Look so at I was you. maybe a little uh, ahead of it, but still, you know, like we didn't hyphenate or anything. But so, but yes, yeah, so, and but I was named after a grandfather whose name okay. was Roland Charles, who died a few months before I was born. So my mom, okay. they said if if it was a boy, he's going to get that name. Nice. So and then yeah. turn to Roly. And be, and well, he was called Roly too. Okay. But it's funny there are so there were uh, um, when I started in comedy sports. Uh, in 101 or 102, there was another Rolly. Um, well, uh, Rolly from Rolly Time Rolly Bomb from. from. Yes. Yeah, and I I, I that I, I never met another Rolly. I'm like, yeah. what are the chances of meeting a at Rolly comedy sports? at comedy sports? Yeah, and that's what it was. Yeah. What's that's, your favorite game, Rolly, in the show? What's your oh, favorite game? If you got a, to, yeah, pick your favorite. You get to play one more game of comedy sports. I would so personally. It would just be an all Shakespearean I know, yeah. uh, just scene. We used to do Shakespeare scenes. Just we a used full... to. Well, I, my favorite memories with you are playing Day in the Life Shakespearean style. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you'd insult the size of my breasts and I'd insult <laughs> the size of your manhood. Talk about shtick. We did it every time and it That's killed. That's so true. That's really true. That's really <laughs> right? true. It killed. That's you right. always fit it in that I have small boobs right, right. and then I'd fit yeah, yeah. in that I, your small manhood and the crowd would go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd laugh. And it was funny and new each time we did it, even though right. we'd done it quite a few times. No, no. That, and that is. And there are only a few people that i would want to play shakespeare with and you are at the very top of the list i know i really mean that no because it just it it worked you because i had the small tiny (laughs) tiny boobs which are so perfect because the joke is real (laughs) (laughs) i'll take that i guess (laughs) no i know but um the uh um no because you kind of knew all the the nuances of Shakespeare, yeah. both stylistically, sure. um, language, how to play with uh, moving a scene from here to here, yeah. the 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 aside to the audience, and it was, I absolutely. So if I if I could do that, yeah. I would. Do, in fact, it, it was really it was fun this past summer, and this is kind of so now I'm what 27 years in in comedy sports, which is kind right. of amazing to me. The longest single job I've ever had. Really, I mean, yeah, as a which is kind of amazing. Um, but so a, a guy, Patrick Schmitz, who, um, started doing comedy mm-hmm. sports and doesn't do it anymore, but has created his own, right. like just world. But so he asked me a number of times to be in his Shakespearean uh, mm-hmm. parodies and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I, I can't in summer. It's in. Mm, right. And so last summer I did it and I, it was so much fun. Yeah. And what was fun about it was first of all, it was Shakespeare. Cause I love doing Shakespeare, but, um, or parody Shakespeare. But I like the idea of having a project, mm-hmm. rehearsing for a project, doing it, and then it's done. And then it's done. I don't know. It's done. Whereas, and this is not bad against comedy sports, but comedy sports is just, here we go again. Mm-hmm. Here we go again. Here we go again. Sure. And so in order to get over the here we go again, I'm always trying to think of, well, let's do something different or yeah. Let's, yeah. let's do an old. Let's mess with it. Right. So I am now, I, I think, <laughs> I said sometimes, like, if I'm becoming too much like uh Marvin Berkowitz, Marvin. If for those of you who don't know Marvin, I love Marvin. Funny, but Marvin, as after he'd been around for a long time, he would say, um, uh, "Let's let's mix this game and that game," and it just became this concoction of w- what? Dick always did that. Let's play this game and marshmallows. Yeah. It was always the marshmallows, right? That's true. Let's Although, play. What are you doing? Do Sideline to paint I, well, that's and true. marshmallows <laughs> all at once. <laughs> And then like, throw in like, some Shakespeare. You can't, you, can't do you can't do that. I do. <laughs> I um, I like I like doing serious scene. Um, okay. But that's marshmallows. Yes. But um, not always marshmallows. But I I would I liked just the idea of being able to make people laugh by not trying to make by them not laugh. Trying to make them laugh. And and for some reason, whenever we did it, it we always did, succeeded. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's so funny because uh, what what are we doing? 
Because we're really not, but we are trying to make them laugh. Right. But we're trying to make them laugh by not trying to make them but laugh. But in a but, different way. Yeah. You know, if anything we can take from you in this moment talking is we need to, down at sports, try new things. Yeah. Go back to games we haven't played in years. Yeah. Make new games. Right. Have more fun. Because I think we get stuck in our little safe zone. Totally. You know? I, I completely agree with that. All right. Let's, let's All right. pick a couple of these. All right. What are these? They're lists of games. Pick two out of there. Read them and tell me which one you'd rather play. Oh, we're going to play a game? No, we're I'm not, not going to play it. No, we're up. not going to play oh. it. I just want you to tell me which one would you rather play. Oh, okay. So I have Dime Store Novel or Crazy Country Mixed Up Hijinks. Um, I would pick, so Dime Store Novel is one where the author is off on the side. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's usually like get a narrating, kid. Narrating yeah. a scene. Oh, okay. So I came up with a little wrinkle because I didn't like Dime Store Novel. Okay. And luckily it was one of those, I it was something that I did that, it worked, and people kind of continue to do it. In fact, maybe I'll do it again. Um, I called it a bedtime story. Yes, with the kids. With the kids. That was you? That was me. Is that because your kids are like the original well, prop boy yeah, and prop yeah, girl? But I, it was just one of those things like, oh, I don't want to. So Dime Store Novel came out, and, and I, I saw a kid in the audience, yeah. and I'm like, I, I want to do this. And it becomes kind of like what mm-hmm. um, the, the child fills in the blanks. Right. And then, then you get all oh, those kids say the craziest things. Right. But then it became dime enough. So I I did like that. But I like crazy country mix up hijinks. Yeah, I um, love it. Yeah, I like the the gibberish. I like the reinterpretation of the the gibberish by the other team. Um, so, and I like I kind of like so I like that. But I like them both. Those are both good games. Huh. All right. All right. Even last right, so round no. here, Rolly. All right. Pick I'm not going to have to like take off my pants or anything well, that well. <laughs> I didn't think you're wearing them this whole time <laughs> <laughs> last round here would you rather all right would I rather do I have to read them both read or them one? both okay the first one would you rather be caught by aliens and placed in an alien zoo <laughs> or 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 and this is the or this is the or or eat a hot dog smothered in caterpillar guts <laughs> wait okay be caught by aliens and placed in an alien zoo yeah or eat a hot so, so that the yeah, the <laughs> eating a hot dog smothered in caterpillar guts, it sucks. But it's over right but away. But it's over. But it's over. This like the, a bad right, show. Right, it's the, done. A, right, the alien thing is a never ending. Never matinee. ending, and I have to poop in a corner <laughs> in front of aliens. I'll take the aliens. <laughs> no, I, I I might I might just take the caterpillar guts. Caterpillar guts. Yeah. I you. Feel, what I, would you do best between those? Well, I would I. I can't handle hot dogs, which my kids find. Can I just hold the hot dog and do the caterpillar goods? My kids are baffled by the fact that I don't like hot dogs Why don't and you cheeseburgers. Like because it, it is not a real food. It's not dog. But it's not food. It's it's mushed up. I don't even. I don't know what it is. You have bull rectum. And, right. right. Hot dogs have always made me uncomfortable. Yeah. The taste, the texture, that I can't do it. So if I would just have the bun with the caterpillar guts, I would do that you over do the that. alien. Okay, but now I find this interesting. You don't like cheese burgers either. No, I don't eat Are red meat. Uh, yeah. Well, I haven't had red meat since I was thirteen. Whoa! I didn't know that. Yeah, and then I went vegetarian until I got to college. I went to Madison too, but at that point, it wasn't like so hip and trendy, yeah. and um, to be a vegetarian. And I'd say, "What's your vegetarian meal for the night?" And they'd say, "Well, we have French fries." Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay." So I started doing chicken and turkey yeah. again. So I, but I don't eat red meat. And is that what hot dogs are? I don't know. What they I don't are. think. No, I, I don't no, know what not. that is. It's like a mock chicken leg in MPS school lunches. <laughs> But I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> it's like, do you remember when you served the, the chicken and or the fish chish at, at comedy sports? We didn't know. Is it chicken? Is it fish? It's just chish. It's just, it's just chish. No, I, can't, I can't do it. I, I'll, I, a caterpillar guts, I'd do that over the alien zoo. Because you're right. I wouldn't want to poop in front of a bunch of yeah, aliens. Yeah, for like, uh, you know. But then you you never know. You might get set up like, well, we need them to mate to create. And so well, they're like, now yeah. if the other, if I was in there with like Matt Damon or LL Cool J, <laughs> yeah. you can damn well think I'm going to be sitting in the Isn't alien zoo. Funny? Isn't it funny? Matt Damon and LL Cool oh, J. Oh, my they list could of be... five. Matt Damon, LL oh, yeah. Cool J. <laughs> Someone thought Ryan about this. Ryan Gosling. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Magic Mike. Channing Tatum. Right. Dave always says, but he sounds like an idiot. He mumbles. I said, I'm not with him for his speech. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, shh. Okay, so is that four? That's four. And who's the other one? 
Um, oh, I'm on the spot. I can't think. Rolly Kafaro. Uh, lie. Rolly lie. Kafaro. Lie. Rolly, thanks for being here. All right, thank you for having this me. This was I, so much fun. Yeah, I loved it. I thank can't you. even stand it. We're going to have to bring you back over and over I, again. Anytime. You have a cancellation, I'm there. I'll just drive my taxi up. And <laughs> with your Michelob. With my Michelob. <laughs> and then I'll give you a lift somewhere. Thanks, Rolly. Rolly Kafaro, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time. The Comedy Sports Podcast is produced and engineered by Kyle Hannigan. Our announcer is PJ Rockwell. Feel free to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Comments and inquiries can be sent to the Comedy Sports Podcast at gmail.com. Created and hosted by me, Christine Rolo Capriolo. Catch you next time. The Comedy Sports Podcast is an independent production made by CSC players. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast host and any guests are their own and do not represent the views and opinions of any CSE location or CSE worldwide. Vocabulary used by the host and guests is not necessarily representative of the CSE brand.